The makers of Campbell Soups present The Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening, this is Orson Welles. Our story for tonight is Noel Coward's Private Lives. When first produced several seasons ago, it startled London and delighted New York, prodding the critics to rustle among their dictionaries and bring out such adjectives as scintillating, gossamer, gleaming, and hilarious. It must delight Noel Coward to look backward a few seasons and find his play has become acclaimed as one of the most famous and lasting of modern comedies. It's been played all over the world and extensively, although so far not successfully, imitated. For Mr. Coward is an astute theatrical observer, and underneath its surface brilliance, he has managed to catch the essential pattern of the modern love story. In writing about private lives, Mr. Coward has said, it was more difficult and full of pitfalls than anything I've ever attempted. But fortunately for me, I had the inestimable advantage of playing it with Gertrude Lawrence. And so three quarters of the battle was won before the curtain went up. Tonight we're sharing Mr. Coward's advantage. It is with great pleasure that we welcome as our guest star to the Campbell Playhouse, Miss Gertrude Lawrence, in one of her acting triumphs, Noel Coward's Private Lives. The story of Elliot and Amanda, two young people who loved each other so intensely and so uproariously that they found it hard to live together and impossible to live apart. But first, on behalf of our sponsors, a message. At this very moment, if you could peek into thousands of ice boxes all over America, you would see cans bearing the familiar red and white label of Campbell's. But these cans would be Campbell's tomato juice. Yes, Campbell's tomato juice, made by the makers of Campbell's tomato soup, and made with the same care and pride. In spite of the fact that Campbell's has become the largest selling tomato juice of all within a few short years, there must be many of you who have not yet tried it. If you are one of these, may I suggest that you get acquainted at the first opportunity. What a perk-up drink it is, especially at breakfast. It has a tang and liveliness all its own to open your day with a smile. Your first sip of Campbell's tomato juice confirms the bright promise of its glorious red color. The red of vine-ripened tomatoes picked at their very peak of flavor. Have you tried Campbell's tomato juice? If you haven't, won't you order a few cans tomorrow? Chill them thoroughly and give the family a treat with their Sunday breakfast. Once you know its keen, lively taste, I feel sure you'll want it regularly. And now Gertrude Lawrence and Orson Welles in Private Lives. My name is Dupont, Jean-Paul Casimir Dupont. I am a hotel manager. 26 years in the hotel business, Cannes, Menton, Saint Moritz, and now the Hotel Normandie Deauville. Ladies and gentlemen, in this time, I have made a most sensational discovery. And this is very confidential. I wouldn't not have one person except you hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lawrence, Mr. Wells, the English people are crazy. How do I know this? I give you just one little example. Last year, it is June, Uh, Wait a minute, please. I have it here in my little book. June 14th at 2.25. I am sitting in my office. Hello? Hello? Qui est à l'appareil? C'est Paris? Hello? 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 Is this the Hotel Normandy, Deauville? Oui, 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 oui. This is Elliot Chase speaking. Oui, Monsieur Chase. I want a suite of rooms for tonight. Something overlooking the sea. One moment, please. I see what I can do. Mais oui, just this morning he's free the best room in the hotel, number 21. Habitually lives there the ex-Maharaja of Rook. All right, we'll be there around eight. The name's Chase, Mr. and Mrs. Elliot Chase. Chase, oui, monsieur. Goodbye. Goodbye, monsieur. Thank you, monsieur. Allô, allô, qui est à la part? C'est Paris, quoi encore? Hello. Hello. Hotel Normandie, Deauville. I say, this is Victor Prynne. Pardon, monsieur. This this is Victor Prynne speaking. Victor Prynne, I want a suite for tonight. What have you got? Uh, One minute, monsieur. I look. 
Oh là 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 là, you are a lucky man, monsieur. Just this morning is free, the best room in the hotel. Number 22. Habitually lives there, the ex maharaja of Rook. Rook? Oh, all right. Well, we'll be in around about eight. The name's Prin. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Prin. Prin? Prin? Prin. Oui, monsieur. Merci, monsieur. Goodbye. Goodbye, monsieur. That evening, at 8.10, arrives the first couple of English, Mr. and Mrs. Chase. Mrs. Chase, she is très gentil, très gentil, small, blonde, with blue eyes. Mr. Elliot Chase is tall, is thin, is dark. Do you sit here? Uh, oui, monsieur. Oui, monsieur Chase, number 21. This is our best suite. This is the suite of the ex-Maharaja of Rook. Uh, voila, we put your bags here in the corner, no? Thank you, that'll be very nice. And here, madame, is your balcony overlooking the sea. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yes, all seems very fine, very fine. Now, if you send us two champagne cocktails, everything will be perfect. Pass that more, monsieur. Two champagne cocktails, two sweets, monsieur. Elliot, Elliot, dear, do come out. Out here on the balcony, it's so lovely. Just a minute. It's not so bad, this place. Oh, it's heavenly in the moonlight, and so private. With its own little rail and that band playing downstairs at the casino. Oh, Elliot, I'm so happy. Are you, Sybil? Aren't you? Of course I am, tremendously happy. Just to think, here we are. You and I, married on our honeymoon. Yes, things have come to a pretty pass. Well, don't laugh at me, Elliot. <laughs> you mustn't be blase about honeymoons just because this is your second. Oh, that's silly. Have I annoyed you by saying that? Just a little. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Kiss me. There. Mm, not very enthusiastic. That better? Three times, please. I'm superstitious. <laughs> you really are very sweet, Sybil. You glad you married me? Of course I am. How glad? Incredibly, magnificently glad. How lovely. Sybil, we ought to go and dress for dinner. Gladder than the last time. Why do you keep harping on that? She was pretty, wasn't she, Amanda? Very pretty. Prettier than I am? Much. Elliot! She was pretty and sleek, and her hands were long and slim, and her legs were long and slim... And she danced like an angel. You dance very poorly, by the way. Could she play the piano as well as I can? She couldn't play the piano at all. I love you far more than Amanda loved you. I'd never make you miserable like she did. We made each other miserable. It was all her fault, Elliot. You know it was. Yes, it was entirely her fault. She was a fool to lose you. We lost each other. She lost you with her violent tempers and carryings on. Oh, will you stop talking about Amanda? You do hate her, don't you? She had some very good qualities. Do you think you could ever love her again? Of course not, Sybil. I love you. Oh, kiss me, darling. Sybil, once and for all, will you start talking about Amanda? Yes, Elliot, dear. I don't wish to see her again or hear her name mentioned ever again. Very well, darling. Is that understood? Yes, darling. Where did you spend your honeymoon with Amanda? St. Moritz, be quiet. I hate St. Moritz. So do I, bitterly. Was she good on skis? Do you want to dine downstairs here or at the casino? Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Good, let's go in. Kiss me first. Uh, yes, dear. Oh, Elliot, darling. Come on, Sybil. Getting late. So, this couple, Monsieur and Mrs. Chase, <laughs> they have been in their suite ten minutes. Alors, bon. At 8.21 arrives the other English, the second couple, Mr. and Mrs. Victor Prin. Mr. Victor Prin is big and strong, Anglo-Saxon, what you call athlete, le football, eh? Huh? Mrs. Victor Prin. My friends, Mrs. Victor Prin. Mrs. Victor Prin, she is... Is this what? it here? Is this it here? Mais oui, madame. Uh, number 22. This is our best suite. This is the suite of the ex-Maharaja of Rook. Uh, voilà. We put your bags in the corner, no? Oh, thanks. That'll be fine. Uh, here, monsieur, is your balcony overlooking the sea. Oh, I say, that's wonderful. Yes, it all seems very nice. Oh, did you? Oui, madame. Will you send us up two dry martinis, too sweet, very dry? Perfect, more, madame. Two martinis, very dry, too sweet, madame. Amanda! What? Come outside. The view's wonderful. And Wait. So, so private, with a little rail between us and the next balcony. Come on out. Wait a minute. Wait till I get a wrap on. I shall catch pneumonia. That's what I shall catch. Jove! I beg your pardon? You look wonderful, Amanda. Thank you, darling. You know, like a beautiful advertisement for something. Nothing peculiar, I hope. And I, I can hardly believe it's true. You and I, here alone together, married. Do you love me? Of course, Victor. That's why I'm here. More than... No, then. None of that. No, but you... Do you, you love me more than you loved Elliot? I don't remember. 
It's such a long time ago. But I like to break his blasted neck. Oh, why? For making you unhappy. It was mutual. Rubbish, it was all his fault. You know it was. Yes, it was. Now I come to think about it. Swine. Don't be so vehement, darling. I'll never treat you like that. That's right. I love you too much, Amanda. So did he. A fine sort of love that is. He struck you once, didn't he? More than once. Where? Several places. What a cad. I struck him, too. Once I broke four gramophone records over his head. It was very satisfying. You must have been driven to distraction. Yes, I was, but don't let's talk about it, please. Look at the lights of that yacht reflected in the water. I wonder whose it is. Oh, you're so beautiful, Amanda. I couldn't love you more than I do now. Oh, dear. I did so hope our honeymoon was going to be progressive. Well, where did you spend the last one? Victor. I want to know. St. Moritz. It was very attractive. I hate St. Moritz. So do I. Did, did Elliot start quarreling with you right away? Within the first few days. I put it down to the high altitude. And you loved him? Yes. Victor. Oh, you poor child. You know, Amanda, I, I think you love me quite differently from the way you loved Elliot. I do wish you'd stop harping on Elliot. It's true enough, though, isn't it? I love you much more calmly, if that's what you mean. More, more lastingly? I expect so. Well, where did you first meet Elliot? Oh, last Elliot. Mandy. I forbid you to mention his name again. I'm sick of the sound of it. You must be raving mad. Here we are on our honeymoon with the moon coming up and the music playing and all you can do is to talk about my first husband. It's downright sacrilegious. Oh, don't, don't be angry. Well, it's very annoying. Will you forgive me? Yes, Victor, but don't do it again. I promise. You better go and shave, my dear. You look perfectly awful. Oh, well, where should we dine? Downstairs here or at the casino? Well, the casino is more fun, I think. Kiss me. There, dear. Now hurry. I'm dreadfully hungry. Oh, give me five minutes. And when the cocktails come, have them sent out here on the balcony. All right. Go along, now hurry. I'll wait for you here. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, it is 8.41. I am standing in the garden. It is moonlight and the music is playing. Above me is the balconies. A sweet 21, a sweet 22. A sweet 21 is this Englishman, Mr. Elliot Chase. A sweet 22 is this other Englishman, Mr. Victor Prynne. Each has his wife. Now listen carefully, please. While I watch, commences on the balconies a movement. Him on balcony 21, little by little he is moving toward her on balcony 22. She on balcony 22, she is moving little by little toward him on balcony 21. Between them now is only the little railing. I am now in the moonlight, my friend, above my head. I hear the to play that tune, wasn't it? Amanda, what are you doing here? I'm on my honeymoon. Oh, interesting. So am I. Are you happy, Amanda? Perfectly. Good. That's all right then, isn't it? Are you? Ecstatically. I'm delighted to hear it. We shall probably meet you again sometime. Au revoir, Elliot. Goodbye, Amanda. How are the cocktails, dear? Really, it's what's the matter? Wasn't I quick? Sybil, I feel very odd, suddenly. Odd? What do you mean? Ill? Yes, ill. What sort of ill? You must leave at once. Leave? Yes, Sybil. Leave this place immediately. Oh, we've only just come. I know that, but it can't be helped. What's happened? What has happened? Nothing has happened. Elliot, you've gone out of your mind. I haven't gone out of my mind, but I tell you, if we stay here another hour, I will. But, darling, everything's unpacked. Now, please, Sybil, I know it sounds crazy to you, but... I've got a second sight over certain things. I'm almost psychic. If we stay here, something appalling will happen. I know it. Do you mean there's going to be an earthquake or something? Oh, very possibly. Very possibly indeed. And they don't have earthquakes in France. Don't quibble, Sybil. I'm asking you, imploring you to come away from this place now, tonight. But I love it here. There are thousands of other places far nicer. Well, it's a pity we didn't go to one of them. Sybil, if there's one thing in the world that infuriates me, it's sheer wanton stubbornness. I should like to cut off your head with a meat axe. How oh, dare you talk to me like that on our honeymoon? Mother was perfectly right. She said you had shifty eyes. Well, you don't love me one little bit. 
I wish I were dead. Will you or will you not come to Paris? No, I won't. Well, I will. I'm going now, this minute. Elliot, wait for me. Elliot! Goodbye. Amanda, Amanda, you're, you're behaving like a lunatic. Not at all, Victor. All I've done is to ask you a little favor. Little favor, indeed. If we left now, we could be in Paris in a few if hours. If we cross Siberia by train, we could be in China in a fortnight. But I don't see any reason to do it. Oh, Victor, darling, please, please be sensible, just for my sake. But why on earth didn't you think of this tragedy before? I forgot. Well, you couldn't forget a thing like that. Well, I got the places muddled. Then when I saw the casino there in the moonlight, it all came back to me. Well, when did all this happen? Years ago. But it might just as well have been yesterday. I can see her now lying dead, all white and cold, with that dreadful expression on her face. Whose face? My sister's face. Amanda, I never knew you had a sister. I haven't anymore. There's something behind all this. Oh, don't be silly, Victor. What could there be behind it? Well, for one thing, Amanda, I know you're lying. Victor! Be honest, aren't you? I can't think how you can be so mean and suspicious. You're lying, Amanda, aren't you? Yes, Victor. Why do you want to leave so badly? You'll be angry if I tell you the truth. What is it? I warn you. Tell me. Please tell me. All right. Elliot's here. What? I saw him. When? Just now, while you were shaving. Where was he? Down there in the garden, in a white suit. White suit? Well, why not? It's summer, isn't it? Did he see you? No, he, he, he was running. Well, what, 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 what was he running for? How on earth do I know? Don't be so annoying. Well, as long as he didn't see you, it's all right, isn't it? It isn't all right at all. We must leave immediately. I absolutely refuse to change all our plans at the last moment, just because you think you've seen your former husband. If he annoys you in any way, I'll knock him down. That would be charming. Now, don't let's talk about it anymore. I see. I see quite clearly now that I've been foolish enough to marry a fat old gentleman in a club armchair. You're a pompous ass. Amanda, control yourself. Get away from me. I can't bear to think I'm married to such rugged grandeur. Amanda! Go away. Very well, Amanda. If that's how you feel, I shall be in the bar. When you're ready to come down and dine, let me know. Go away. I'm Go going. away. I'm going... Hello, Elliot. Hello, Amanda. I'm in such a rage. So am I. What are we going to do? I don't know. Whose yacht is that down there in the harbor? The Duke of Westminster's, I expect. It always is. I wish I were on it. I wish you were, too. There's no need to be nasty. Yes, there is every need. I've never in my life felt a greater urge to be nasty. You've had some urges in your time, haven't you, dear? If you start bickering with me, Amanda, I swear I'll throw you over the edge of this balcony. Try it. That's all. Just try it. You've upset everything as usual. I've upset everything. What about you? Ever since the first moment I was unlucky enough to set eyes on you, my life has been insupportable. Oh, do shut up. There's no use in going on like that. Nothing's any use. There's no escape. Ever. Don't be melodramatic. Do you want a cocktail? There are two here. There are two over here as well. We'll have my two first. Come on over. Over the rail. Here. Let me help you. That's right. Thanks. Well, here's to you, Amanda. I tried to get him away the moment after I'd seen you, but he wouldn't budge. What's his name? Victor. Victor Prynne. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Prynne. Mine wouldn't budge either. What's her name? Sybil. Mr. and Mrs. Elliot Chase. Hmm. Poor girl. Are you in love with him, Amanda? Of course. How funny. I don't see anything particularly funny about it. You're in love with yours, aren't you? Certainly. There you are, then. Well, there, there we both are, then. What's she like? Fair, very pretty, plays the piano beautifully. Very comforting. How's yours? I don't wish to discuss it. Well, it doesn't matter. Probably come popping out in a minute, and I shall see for myself. Does he know I'm here? Yes, I told him. That's going to make things a whole lot easier. No, you needn't be frightened, Elliot. He won't hurt you. If he comes near me, I'll scream the place down. Does Sybil know I'm here? No, I pretended I had a presentiment. I tried terribly hard to persuade her to leave for Paris. I tried too. What's happened to yours? Didn't you hear her screaming? She's downstairs in the dining room, I think. Mine's being grand in the bar. Hmm. Really is awfully difficult. Awfully difficult. I say that orchestra's a remarkably small repertoire. Yes, they don't seem to know anything but this, do they? You always had a sweet voice, Amanda. Thank you. Amanda, I'm awfully sorry about all this. Really, I am. I, I wouldn't have had it happen for the world. I know. I'm sorry, too. It's just rotten luck. I'll go away tomorrow, whatever happens, so don't you worry. That's nice of you. 
I hope everything turns out splendid for you. I hope you'll be very happy, Amanda. I hope the same for you, too. Nasty, insistent little tune. Extraordinary how potent cheap music is. What exactly were you remembering at that moment? St. Moritz. Hmm. The Palace Hotel skating rink in the morning. Bright, strong sunlight. Everybody whirling round in vivid colours. And you kneeling down to put my skates on for me. You'd fallen on your face a few minutes before. <laughs> it was beastly of you to laugh at me like that. I felt so humiliated. Poor darling. Do you remember waking up in the morning, standing out on the balcony looking across the valley? Blue shadows on white snow. Cleanness beyond belief. High above everything in the world. How beautiful it was. It's nice to think we had a few marvelous moments. A few? We had heaps, really. Only they slip away into the background, and one only remembers the bad ones. Yes. What fools we were to ruin it all. What utter, utter fools. You feel like that too, do you? Of course. Why did we? But the whole business was too much for us. We were so ridiculously over in love. Funny, wasn't it? Horribly funny. Selfishness, cruelty, hatred, possessiveness and petty jealousy. All those qualities came out in us just because we loved each other. Perhaps they were there anyhow. No, it's love that does it. Love's no good. Down with love. And yet, here we are starting afresh with two quite different people. In love all over again, aren't we? Aren't we? No. Elliot. We're not in love all over again. And you know it. Good night, Amanda. Elliot, don't be silly. Come back. I must go and find Sybil. I must go and find Victor. Well, why don't you? I don't want to. Oh, it's shameful. Shameful of us. Oh, don't. I feel terrible. Don't leave me for a minute. I should go mad if you do. Now, listen. We won't talk about ourselves anymore. We'll just talk about outside things. Anything you like, only just don't leave me until I pull myself together. Very well. What have you been doing lately during these last years? Traveling about. Went round the world, you know, after... Yes, yes, I know. How was it? The world? Yes. Well, highly enjoyable. China must be very interesting. Very big, China. And Japan? Very small. Did you eat shark's fins and take your shoes off and use chopsticks and everything? Practically everything. And India? The burning gars or gats or whatever they are. And the Taj Mahal. How was the Taj Mahal? Unbelievable. A sort of dream. And that was the moonlight. Yes. Moonlight is cruelly deceptive. Darling, darling, I love you so. I do hope you met a sacred elephant there. Lint white, I believe, and very, very sweet. I've never loved anyone else for an instant. No, 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 you must. <laughs> darling. Elliot, stop it. You love me too, don't you? There's no doubt about it anywhere, is there? No. No doubt anywhere. You're looking very lovely, Amanda, in this moonlight. Your skin is clear and cool, and your eyes are shining, and you're growing lovelier and lovelier every second as I look on you. You don't hold any mystery for me, darling. Do you mind? I'm glad, my sweet. More than any desire anywhere, deep down in my deepest heart, I want you back again. Please. Don't say any more. You're making me cry so dreadfully. Amanda. What now? Oh, darling, what now? I don't know. I'm lost, utterly. We must think quickly, quickly. Yes. Yes, we've got to decide instantly, one way or another. Go away together now or stay with him. And never see one another again, don't ever. Don't silly. What choice is there? No choice at all. Come on. No, wait. This is sheer raving madness. Something's happened to us. We're not safe. We never were. Where can we go? Paris first. My car's in the garage already. They'll follow us. That doesn't matter once the thing's done. Oh, Elliot, we're being so bad. So terribly bad. We'll suffer for this. I know we shall. Can't be helped. Starting all those awful rows all over again. Oh, no, no. We're older and wiser now. What difference does that make? The first moment either of us gets a bit nervy, off we'll go well, now, again. Now, stop shilly-shallying, Amanda. I'm trying to be sensible. You're only succeeding in being completely idiotic. Idiotic, indeed. What about now, you? Now, look here, Amanda. Elliot. Darling, darling. I didn't mean it. I won't move from here until we have a pact. A sacred, sacred pact never to quarrel again. Easy to make, but difficult to keep. No, no, no. It's the bickering that does it. The moment we notice we're bickering, either of us, we must promise on our honor to stop dead. 
We'll invent some phrase or catchword which, when either of us says it, automatically cuts off all conversation for at least five minutes. Two minutes, dear, with an option of renewal. Oh, very well. What shall it be? Solomon Isaacs. Solomon Isaacs. All right, that'll do. Come on. Come well, what on. Shall, what shall we do if we meet either of them on the way downstairs? Run like stags. Oh, darling, I dare. And it's too wicked of us. I simply dare. Solomon Isaacs. But earlier, darling. Solomon Isaacs. Come on, Amanda. Quick, someone's coming. This way's the rail. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Hurry up, darling. Oh, but darling. Oh. oh, evening. Oh, good evening. I was uh, looking for my husband. Really? That's funny. I was looking for my wife. <laughs> Quite a coincidence. Yes. Uh, my name's Prin. Victor Prin. My name's Sybil Chase. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Pretty nice here, isn't it? Lovely. Been here long? No, we only arrived this evening. Another coincidence. So did we. <laughs> how awfully funny. Oh, you care for a cocktail? Oh, no, thank you, really. Oh, there are two here on the table, uh, on my side. Oh, thanks very much. I'd love one. Good. Here you are. Thank you. It's awfully pretty here, isn't it? The moonlight and the lights of that yacht reflected in the water. Yes. I wonder who it belongs to. Oh. To absent friends. To absent friends? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... The life of the hotel manager, it is a torment, a living inferno. And always, nearly always, this is so, ladies and gentlemen, the hotel manager dies young. It is the fault, almost entirely the fault, of the English people. I give you now an example. On June 14th of last year, I lose from my hotel suddenly in the night four customers. At six minutes after nine departs Mr. Elliot Chase. At 31 minutes after 11, departs Mr. Victor Prin. But this is the strange thing. Mr. Victor Prin does not depart with Mrs. Victor Prin. Why does he not depart with his wife, Mrs. Victor Prin? Aha! Because Mrs. Victor Prin is not here anymore. And why is Mrs. Victor Prin not here anymore? Because Mrs. Victor Prin is on the way to Paris. And with whom is she on the way to Paris? <laughs> with Mr. Elliot Chase. It is as I have said. You see what I tell you. These people are crazy! You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Private Lives, starring Gertrude Lawrence and Orson Welles. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In a moment or two, we will resume our presentation of Noel Coward's private lives, but first a message. I imagine that Campbell's soups are used in your home just as they are in millions of homes across the country. But tonight I want to ask you about something else which Campbell's make, Campbell's tomato juice. Have you tried it? A great many people have, because Campbell's is the largest selling tomato juice in America. Shortly after Campbell started making it, just a few years ago... Women saw it in their grocery stores. Being acquainted with the goodness of Campbell's soups, many of them decided to try Campbell's tomato juice. At first taste, they must have liked it and then told their friends and neighbors about it, for its popularity has spread from coast to coast. There are those who have orange juice every morning for breakfast. Still others have tomato juice every morning. Perhaps the largest group of all have orange juice one morning and tomato juice the next. On your tomato juice mornings, I'd like to urge you to drink... Campbell's tomato juice. Now we resume our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Noel Coward's Private Lives, starring Gertrude Lawrence and Orson Welles. Elliot? Elliot? Yes, Amanda. 
I'm so glad we didn't go out this evening. Well, so am I. Our first evening in Paris. Oh, it's nice here, isn't it? Strangely peaceful. And the drive up was lovely. How do you know? You slept most of the way. I know I did, darling, but it was lovely anyway. We've hardly used Solomon Isaacs all day. Solomon Isaacs is so long. Let's shorten it to Solox. Solox. <laughs> all right. Happy, darling? Of course. It'll be even happier when we've had dinner. How long do you think it'll be? Oh, I don't know. The French are a very conscientious people. We may get it by nine or ten. <laughs> That's good. You know, Amanda, it's an awful bad reflection on our characters. We ought to be absolutely tortured with conscience. Yeah, every now and then. Not nearly enough. Well, we sent Victor and Sybil a nice wire from wherever it was. What more can they want? You're even more ruthless than I am. I don't believe in crying over my bridges before I've eaten them. Very sensible. Personally, I feel grateful for a miraculous escape. I know now that I should never have been happy with Victor. I was a fool ever to consider it. You did a little more than consider it. Well, you can't talk. I wonder whether Victor and Sybil met each other, whether they've been suffering alone. Oh, dear, don't let's go on about it. It really does make one feel rather awful. I know, I know, but I suppose one or the other, both of them will turn up eventually. And... Bound to. Won't be very nice, will it? Perfectly horrible. Darling, you do look awfully sweet in your little smoking jacket. Yes, it is pretty ravishing, isn't it? <laughs> do you mind if I come round and kiss you? <laughs> A pleasure, Lady Agatha. Mm, what fools we were to subject ourselves to five years' unnecessary suffering. Perhaps it wasn't unnecessary. Perhaps it mellowed and perfected us like beautiful ripe fruit. Elliot, when we were together, did you really think I ever looked at anyone else? Yes, practically all the time. <laughs> I thought you did, too. I used to torture myself with visions of you bouncing about with awful widows. Well, why widows? Well, I was thinking of Claire Lavenham, really. Oh, Claire... What did you say, oh, Claire, like that for? Sounded far too careless to me. What a lovely creature she was. Oh, lovely, lovely, yes, lovely. Lovely, darling. <laughs> Trifle over vivacious, I always thought. But that was probably because she was fundamentally Oh, well, now, darling. Your tastes always did. Solux. I'm sorry, darling. What are you thinking about? Mm, nothing in particular. Come on, I know that face. Poor Sybil. Sybil? Yes, yes I... I suppose she loves you terribly. Well, not as much as all that. She didn't have a chance to get really underway. I expect she's dreadfully unhappy. Oh, do shut up, Amanda. We've had all that out before. Well, what if we'd never happen to meet again? Would you have been quite happy with Sybil? I expect so. Oh, well, you needn't look so stricken. It would have been the same with you and Victor. Life would have been smooth and amicable and quite charming, wouldn't it? Poor dear Victor. He certainly did love me. Splendid. When I first met him, I was so lonely and depressed. I felt that I was growing old and crumbling away, unwanted. It certainly is horrid when one begins to crumble. He used to look at me hopelessly like a lovely spaniel. Hmm. And I sort of melted like snow in the sunlight. That must have been an edifying spectacle. Victor really had great charm. You must tell me all about it. He had a positive mania for looking after me and protecting me. That would have died down in time, dear. You mustn't be rude. There's no necessity to be rude. I wasn't in the least rude. I merely made a perfectly rational statement. Your voice was decidedly bitter. Victor had glorious legs, hadn't he? And uh, fascinating ears. Elliot. I'm sick of listening to you. Yap, 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 yapping about Victor. Now listen, Elliot, once more. Oh, my dear, Solux. Solux, 30 seconds. Solux. Yeah, but... Solux. <laughs> We're in love, all right. Oh, don't say it so bitterly. Let's try to get the best out of this time instead of the worst. It was my fault. And I'm terribly sorry, darling. I was very irritating. I know I was. I'm sure Victor was awfully nice. And you're perfectly right to be sweet about it. That's downright handsome of you, sweet. Yes, I, I think I love you more than ever before. Isn't it ridiculous? Come on, sit down on the sofa here beside me. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Almost. Wait a minute. You know, this is far too perfect to last. You have no faith. That's what's wrong with you. Absolutely none. I do love you so. Don't breathe so hard, dear heart. It gives me the shivers. Swivel your face round a bit more. That better? Very nice. Thank you kindly. Oh, darling, you're so mm. terribly, terribly dear and sweet mm. and attractive. We were raving mad ever to part, even for an instant. Not an imbecile. I realized it almost immediately. Didn't Long you? Long before we got our decree. My heart broke on that trip around the world. I saw such beautiful things, darling. Moonlight shining on old temples. 
strange barbaric dances in jungle villages, scarlet flamingos flying over deep, deep blue water, breathlessly lovely, and completely unexciting because you weren't there to see them with me. Oh, take me there, please. Take me at once. Let's make up for lost time. Next week. Tomorrow. Done. I must see those dear flamingos. Angel. 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 No, oh, Elliot, that's enough. Please don't kiss me anymore. Why not? Not before dinner. You really do. You say the most awful things. I don't say anything particularly awful about that. No sense of glamour. No sense of glamour at all. Well, it's very difficult to feel really glamorous with a crick in the neck. Why did you say you had a crick in your neck? Well, it's gone now. How convenient. Cigarette, please. Here. Match. Wait a minute, can't you? Chivalrous little love. Here. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. You don't have to throw them at me. You really can be more irritating than anyone in this world. I fail to see what I've done that's so terribly irritating. You have no tact. Tact? You have no consideration? For dinner, indeed. That sort of remark shows a rather common sort of mind, I'm afraid. Oh, it does, does it? Very unpleasant. Makes me shudder. Making all this fuss just because your silly vanity is a little upset? Vanity? What do you mean, vanity? Amanda, has it ever occurred you to you? You know perfectly well what I mean, and don't try to pet me. Now, look here, me. Amanda. Darling, darling, Solocks. For heaven's sake, Solux. Now listen. Solux, Solux, oh dear, triple Solux. Solux. Oh. Darling. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> big romantic stuff, this, darling. Yes, big romantic stuff. You're the most thrilling, exciting woman that was ever born. Dearest, dearest heart. Oh, good heavens. Do you think it's them? I wonder. Does Victor know this number? Of course he does. Nobody else knows I'm back in Paris. Must be then, then. What are we to do? We're all right, darling, aren't we? Whatever happens. Now and always, my sweet. I don't care, then. It was bound to come sooner or later. Hello, hello, what? Como? Madame Key? Hello, hello. Who's that? Oh, Madame Duvalon. Oui, oui, oui. It's only somebody wanting to talk to the dear Madame Duvalon, dear. Who's she? I have the faintest idea. Je regrette beaucoup, monsieur. Mais Madame Duvalon vient de partir cet après-midi pour Madagascar. Oh, I gave me a fright. What did you say? I said Madame Duvalon sailed today for Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, what should we do if they suddenly walk in on us? Behave exquisitely. With the most perfect poise. Certainly. I shall probably do a court courtesy. You know, things that ought to matter dreadfully don't matter at all when one's happy, do they? What's so terrible is that one can't stay happy. Darling, don't say that. It's true. The whole business is a very poor joke. Meaning that sacred and beautiful thing, love? Yes, meaning just that. <laughs> don't laugh at me, I'm serious. You mustn't be serious, my dear, when it's just what they want. Who's they? They all the dull and stupid people who try to make life unbearable. Laugh at them, laugh at everything. If I laugh at everything, I must laugh at us, too. Certainly you must. We have figures of fun, all right. How long will it last? This ludicrous, overbearing love of ours. Elliot, should we always want to bicker and fight? Who knows? It all depends on how well we've played. What happens if one of us dies? Does the one that's left still laugh? Oh, yes, yes, with all his might. I believe you're talking nonsense. So is everyone else in the long run. Darling. Do you remember that awful scene we had in Venice? <laughs> Which particular one? <laughs> when your curling irons burned a hole in my new dressing gown. That was a rouser, wasn't it? <laughs> that was the first time you ever hit me. I didn't hit you very hard. We were very much younger then. And very much sillier. As a matter of fact, the real cause of that row was Peter Burden. Oh, you knew there was nothing in that? I didn't know anything of the sort. You took presents from him. Presents? A trivial little bro. I remember it well, bristling with diamonds. In the worst possible taste. Not at all. It was very pretty. I still have it, and I wear it often. You went out of your way to torture me over Peter Burden. I didn't. You worked the whole thing up in your own stupid imagination. You must admit that he was in love with you, wasn't he? Just a little, perhaps. Nothing serious. You let him kiss you. You said you didn't. Well, what of it? What of it? Well, it gave him a lot of pleasure, and it didn't hurt me. What about me? Well, if you hadn't been so suspicious and nosy, you'd never have known a thing about it. Now, that's a nice point of view, I must say. Oh, dear, I'm bored with the whole conversation. So am I. Bored, Steph. Want a cocktail? No, thanks. I'll have a small one, I think. I don't see why you want it. You've already had two. No particular reason anyhow. They were very small ones. Seems so silly to go on and on and on and on and on about a thing. You could hardly call three dry martinis in a whole evening going on and on and on and on. 
become a habit with you. You needn't be so grand just because you don't happen to want any yourself at the don't moment. Be stupid. Oh, really, Amanda. What? Nothing. It's a pity you didn't have another martini. It might have made you a little less disagreeable. It doesn't seem to work such wonders with you. Snap, snap, snap. Just like a little adder. Adders don't snap. They sting. Nonsense. They have a little bag of venom behind their fangs and they snap. They sting. They snap. They sting. I don't care. Do you understand? I don't care. I don't mind if they bark and roll about like hoops. Not very funny, dear. You better have another cocktail. Very good idea. I will. Ridiculous ass. I beg your pardon. I said ridiculous ass. Thank you. You'd better turn that radio off, I think. Why? It's quite late and it will annoy the people upstairs. There aren't any people upstairs. It's a photographer's studio. There are people downstairs, I suppose. They're away in Tunis. This is no time of the year for Tunis. Turn it on again, please. I'll do no such thing. Very well, if you insist on being boorish and idiotic. Turn it off. It's driving me mad. You're far too temperamental. Try to control yourself. Turn it off. I won't. There. Now you've torn it out of the wall. Good job, too. Disagreeable pig. Amanda, put that radio down. Amanda, darling. Sollock, Sollock. Oh, Sollock's yourself. You spiteful little beast. Oh, oh, you struck me. This is the end, you understand, the end. Finally and forever, I'm leaving. You're not going away like this. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, you no, you... me. Shut you, up. You cruel Shut thing. up, I wouldn't marry I you again. I hate to loathe you. Thank you, I realize you are a mean, evil little vampire. You never, never, I hope never, I never, I never, never set eyes on you again so long oh, as I live. You beast, you, you brute, you swine, you cad, you beast. I'll break every bone in your body. Oh! Oh! Sure, this is the right place. Of course I am. This is Amanda's apartment. Oh, well, that settles it. There's nobody here. Why, the door's open. Oh, that's strange. Good heaven. I say, what's been going on here? I never saw such a shambles. Well, it looks like they've killed each other. Amanda! Elliot! Not a sound. I say, Sybil, this bedroom door's locked. Well, so is this one. No, I don't like this at all. Amanda! 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 Go away! Go away! Elliot, say something! I've got nothing to say. Amanda! It's me, Victor! I know it is! Go away! Way! Oh, dear, this is awful. Oh, I say, I say, don't, don't, don't cry, Sybil, old girl. I can't help it, Victor. Oh, please don't. I, I, I say, please, Sybil. But why don't they come out? It's all so squalid. I wish now we hadn't come. Oh, what's the use? Well, we've got to see him before we go back to England. We, we must get things straightened out, Sybil. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I wish I were dead. Oh, shh, no, no, shh, no, no, no. Oh, I'll try to control no. myself, honey. I'm so tired. No. That was such a long drive, and I haven't slept properly for ages. Oh, well, neither have I. If we hadn't arrived, we did. They'd have killed one another. They must have been drunk. Amanda hit him. He probably hit her, too, l- earlier on. I had no idea anyone ever behaved like that. It's so disgusting, so degrading. Elliot, of all people. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What an escape you've had. What an escape we've both had. Good evening, everybody. Elliot, how could you? Look here, old man. Does it occur to you that some sort of explanation... How do you do? How do you do? I don't think we've met before. Hello, Sybil. Oh, Elliot, how could you? Sybil, I'm awfully sorry. Well, it's easy enough to be sorry. On the contrary, I find it extremely difficult. I seldom regret anything. This is a very rare and notable exception. Sort of red-letter day. We must all make the most of it. I'll never forgive you. Never. I wouldn't have believed anyone could be so careless and so cruel. Sybil, I absolutely see your point. I am sorry, but I simply cannot discuss this any further before dinner. I don't want any dinner. Oh, yes, you do. You must be famished after that long drive from Deauville. Now then, where's Amanda? I'm sure she's simply dying to see you both. Where'd she go to? She's in there. In here? Amanda! Amanda! Good evening, everybody. Amanda, we have guests. Please don't address me. I don't wish to speak to you. Splendid. And what's more, I never shall again as long as I live. I shall endeavor to rise above it. I've been brought out to believe that it's beyond the pale for a man to strike a woman. A very poor tradition. Certain women should be struck regularly, like gongs. Elliot, how could you? I told you what he was. He's an unmitigated cad and a bully. And you're an ill-mannered, bad-tempered slattern. Slattern, Slattern. Yes, slattern, 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 and fishwife. Keep your mouth shut, you swine. And you mind your own business. Why, you my life? Please, help me, Amanda. I'm not going to interfere. Let them fight if they want to. It'll probably clear the air anyhow. Yes, but Amanda... Come on into my room. Perhaps you'd like to tidy up before dinner. No, but Amanda... Come along. Very well. 
Now then. Now then what? Are you going to take back those things you said to Amanda? Certainly, I'll take back anything if only you'll stop bellowing at me. You're a coward, too. They want us to fight, don't you see? No, I don't. Why should they? Primitive feminine instincts, warring males, very enjoyable. You think you're very clever, don't you? I think I'm a bit cleverer than you, but apparently that's not saying much. What? Oh, do sit down. I will not! Well, if you'll excuse me, Victor, I will. I'm extremely tired. Oh, for heaven's sake, behave like a man. Listen a minute, listen a minute. All this belligerency is very right and proper and highly traditional, but if only you'll think for a moment, you'll see that it won't get us very far. Devil with all that! I... I should like to explain that if you hit me, I shall certainly hit you probably equally hard, if not harder. I'm just as strong as you. Then you'd hit me again, and I'd hit you again. We'd go on until one of the others knocked out. Now, if you'd explain to me satisfactorily how all that can possibly improve the situation, I'll tear off my coat and go at it ha hammer and tongs immediately. It would ease my mind. Only if you won. I should win, all right. Want to try? Yes. Well, it goes, then. Uh, just a moment. Well? Well, uh, what, what, what did you mean about, about, about them wanting us to fight? It would be a bomb to their vanity. Do you love Amanda? Is this a battle or a discussion? If it's the latter, I shall put on my coat again. I don't want to catch a chill. Answer my question, please. Have a cigarette? Answer my question. If you analyze it, it's rather a silly question. Do you love Amanda? Not very much at the moment, to be perfectly frank. I'd like to wring her neck. You're apparently even more of a cad than I thought you were. You are completely in the right over the whole business. Don't imagine I'm not perfectly conscious of that. I'm glad. It's all very unfortunate. Unfortunate? Might have been worse. I'm glad you think so. I do wish you'd stop being so glad about everything. What do you intend to do? That's what I want to know. What do you intend to do? I don't know. I don't care. I suppose you realize you've broken that poor little woman's heart. Yeah, which poor little woman? Well, Sybil, of course. Oh, come on, Anna. Spare's bad as that. It should get over it. Forget all about me. I intend to divorce Amanda. Very well. And Sybil will divorce you. Quiet. And the sooner you marry Amanda again, the better. Well, who said I was going to marry Amanda? What? She's a vile-tempered, wicked woman. Well, you should have thought of that before. I did think of it before. Good heavens, man, you've got to marry her. I'd rather marry a ravening leopard. Now, look here, old man, I'm sick of all this shilly-shallying. You're getting off a good deal more lightly than you deserve. You can consider yourself lucky I didn't shoot you. Well, if you had a spark of manliness in you, you would have shot me. It's your own fuss and fume. You're one of those cotton-wool Englishmen. I despise you. You despise me? Yes, utterly, utterly. You're nothing but a rampaging gas bag. Goodbye. Hey there, come back here, come back, you hear me? You open this door or... Oh, hello. Oh, Amanda. What's happening, Victor? No, 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 nothing's happening. Well, you ought to be ashamed to admit it. Where's Elliot? Uh, he's in there. He locked himself in. How did you and Elliot get on? Well, I told him what I thought of him. That's good. What did you say? I told him he was beneath contempt. Good. That's just what he is. Amanda, I think you must have been mad to go off with him. I've often thought that myself. Well, I, I, I feel completely lost, completely bewildered. I don't blame you. I don't feel any too cozy myself. Uh, Amanda, all this tonight... Uh, have you been drinking? Certainly not. Had um, Elliot been drinking? Yes. Gallons. You used to see to drink before when you, when you were married to yes, him? Yes, terribly. Night after night he'd come home roaring and hiccuping. Disgusting. Yes, wasn't it? Uh, Amanda. Yes, Victor? Did he really strike you this evening? Repeatedly. I'm bruised beyond recognition. Amanda! Oh, Victor. I'm most awfully sorry to have given you so much trouble. Really, I am. You know, I, I can't stand, understand it at all. I, I've tried to, but I can't. It, it all seems so unlike you. No, no, no. It isn't really unlike me. That's the trouble. I ne ought never to have married you, Victor. I'm a bad lot. Amanda! Don't contradict me. I know I'm a bad lot. I wasn't going to contradict you. Victor! Why did you come here? To find out what you want me to do. Divorce me, I suppose, as soon as possible. I shan't make any difficulties. I shall go away. Far, far away. Morocco or Tunis or somewhere. I should probably catch some dreadful fever and die out there all alone. Oh, dear. Well, it's no use pitying yourself. I seem to be the only one who does. I might just as well enjoy it. Amanda, do, do you love this man? I hate him. Do you want to marry him? I'd rather marry a boa constrictor. <laughs> Amanda, I, I can't go away and leave you with a man who drinks and knocks you about. Oh, you needn't worry about leaving me as though I were a sort of parcel. I can take care of myself. You said just now you were going away to Tunis to die. Yeah, well, I've changed my mind. It's the wrong time of the year for Tunis. I should go somewhere quite different. I believe Alaska's very nice in the summer. Oh, Victor. Victor, I'm thoroughly unprincipled. Sybil was right. Sybil's an ass. Yes, she is rather, isn't she? I can't think why Elliot ever married her. Oh, you can't, can't you? Well, I must say. I beg your pardon. Oh, Sybil, you, you haven't met, have you? This is Sybil Chase and... Uh, 
And this is Amanda... Uh, uh, Amanda. How do you do? How do you do? I heard every word you said. It's all right, my dear. You're young and inexperienced, so I forgive you freely. Seeing the depths of degradation to which age and experience have brought you, I'm glad I am as I am. That was exceedingly rude. I think you'd better go away somewhere. I will not. Very well, then I will. Sybil, how dare you speak to Amanda like that? Oh, that's right. Take her side. That's what I might have expected. That's right. Stand up for him. Poor Elliot, that unprincipled Rue. He's nothing of the sort. Shut up. I won't shut up when I think of all the things you've said about her. It makes me laugh, it does, really. To see how completely she's got you again. You can obviously speak with great authority, having had the intelligence to marry a drunkard. So that's what she's been telling you. Yes, she did, and I'm quite sure it's perfectly true. I expect she admitted to tell you that she drank 14 martinis tonight straight off, and that the reason their first marriage was broken up was that she used to come home at all hours of the night screaming and hiccuping. Victor. Yeah? Did you hear that? What? The door. Yes, that was the door. Victor, I have a strange feeling. So have I. You don't suppose... Sure of it. You mean... I do, they've gone. Gone! Elliot! Elliot, come back! Amanda! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lawrence and Monsieur Wells, do you remember me? I am Jean-Paul Casimir Dupont, the manager of the Hotel Normandie Deauville. And I have said, the Englishmen are crazy. You still do not believe this? You think I exaggerate? Eh bien, a year has gone by. One year. And I am sitting in my office at the Hotel Normandie d'Auville. <coughs> allô, allô? Qui est dans la par est Paris? Allô? Allô, allô, is this the Hotel Normandie d'Auville? Mais oui, mais oui. This is Elliot Chase speaking. Pardon? Elliot Chase. Yes, Monsieur Che. I want to reserve a suite of rooms, something overlooking the sea. Uh, one moment, please, I will see. Oui, monsieur, you are very lucky, monsieur. Just this morning, is falling for you the best room in the hotel. It was living there, the ex Maharaja of Rook, number 21. Oh, 21, that's fine. 22. What? Hello? 22? One what? moment, please. What's that, Amanda? 22. 20, what are you talking about? Oh, Elliot, darling, I tell you, it's 22 that the Raja of Rook Oh, always... shut up, Amanda. Elliot, shut I up. will not stand for this. Please, shut up, Give Amanda. me that telephone. I will not you give you this telephone. There's no earthly reason why I should. There's no reason. Hello! Hello, hello! Elliot, now listen, really. Amanda, I will not argue any further. Give no, me the no. Give me back the telephone. Hello, hello, hello! Give me back the telephone. You see, Amanda. what do I tell you? Amanda. The English people are crazy. <laughs> This concludes the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Private Lives by Noel Coward, starring Gertrude Lawrence and Orson Welles. In just a moment, Miss Lawrence will return to the microphone with Mr. Welles. But in the meantime, a word on behalf of our sponsors. Earlier this evening, I suggested that you serve Campbell's tomato juice this coming Sunday for breakfast. For a great many Americans, Sunday breakfast is a bright spot in the week. Leisure adds to the joy of eating. And Campbell's tomato juice brightens any breakfast, weekday or Sunday. It is the deep red of a very special type of tomato, grown especially for Campbell's. A drink to cheer you by its bright appearance, as well as by its true fresh tomato taste. A drink, too, that by its keen, lively flavor makes a pleasant change from other breakfast drinks. Campbell's own method of canning retains the August fresh flavor of Campbell's tomato juice and brings you the needed vitamins of the fresh tomatoes. Here's a drink that's worth tumbling out of bed for Sunday or any other day. The flavor is always the same, delightfully refreshing. And yet, with all these important advantages, Campbell's tomato juice costs you only a trifle more than the ordinary kinds. Is it a date for Sunday breakfast? Ah, <laughs> that's fine. Let's all have Campbell's tomato juice. And now, here is Orson Welles. 
Somebody once said that every man in New York is or has been in love with Gertrude Lawrence. Which, under pressure, I might admit, was somewhat exaggerated, but it would serve to indicate how audiences react to her. Miss Lawrence is that rare phenomenon, rare in life and just as rare in the theater, a person with the ability to inject the rich glamour of her own person into whatever situation she happens to be in. Not the least part of this wonderful gift of hers is the grace and effortless ease with which she does it. I'm sure some of that quality of personal magic has come over to you tonight. Certain it is that we are all deeply susceptible to it here in the studio. Thank you for those kind words, Mr. Wells, but I must rush to my own defense. Too often the life of an actress is reported in rainbow colors, a sort of dream world of continual admiration and excitement. Actually, there is more to it than this. An actress has to be a businesswoman, and it is probably the hardest working business in the world. That's particularly true in your case, Miss Lawrence, since you could hardly be described, uh, certainly be described as the most hard-working star on the stage in America. Of course, if you've only yourself to blame in this matter, since you insist on appearing only in smash hits, I mean specifically tonight at 8.30, Susan and God, and now this new comedy of yours, The Skylark. That takes care of about three years of packed houses, doesn't it? And now, Miss Lawrence, uh, dark rumors have reached us here of your doings as a young child. Oh, just what is this wild tale of you and Noel Coward making your debuts together at the advanced age of 11 in London? Is there any particle of truth in this allegation? <laughs> yes, you're quite correct. Absolutely correct. Good. Mr. Coward and I were in dramatic school together, and we did, on one occasion, appear in the same play. It was a Christmas story in London. And what did you play? <laughs> We played Little Angels. In tonight's Campbell Playhouse production of Private Lives, Miss Gertrude Lawrence was heard in the role of Amanda. Orson Welles played the part of Elliot Chase. Sybil was played by Naomi Campbell, the part of Victor by Robert Spate. The hotel manager was Edgar Barrier. Music for the Campbell Playhouse is arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. And now, Mr. Wells, will you tell us, please, about next week's story? Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we go back a hundred years to the early days of the American Union when the first paddle steamers puffed their sooty way up the Hudson River and ox teams were busy pulling senators' carriages out of the deep mud of the Washington streets. Next week, we bring you... Black Daniel, from the book by that distinguished novelist, Honor Wilson Morrow. The story of the great Daniel Webster and of his love for the beautiful Carolyn Leroy, which brought him from his New England farm to the service of his country and the defense of the Union. Our guest for the evening will be that lovely motion picture star, Miss Joan Bennett. And now until next Friday, until Black Daniel, our sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse remain obediently yours. Makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse again next Friday evening when that beautiful and talented screen star, Joan Bennett, joins him in Honorary Morrow's Black Daniel, a love story of the days when the United States was very young. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's Campbell Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's tomato juice? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. I'll Follow My Secret Heart was from Conversation Peace. I'll See You Again and Sagoina from Bittersweet and Never Again was from Set to Music. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.